title of my message today is Temple. Temple. And we're going to uh, learn uh, on the Word of God in Scripture what the Bible says about time and an aspect of time. And we've been uh, uh, studying uh, the, uh, the Scripture in Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to continue. Uh, Genesis 1 1 it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then Scripture continues with uh, what is called the, the chapter of creation, and we get to what is called the first day. So let's continue in Genesis verse 3, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. I'm going to ask you to do the translation uh, at, at the back, please. Yes, but you please go to the back. Thank you. Uh, so, and it was the evening and the morning the first day. So, on the first day, God did something special. He said that God, God spoke. Uh, and he said, uh, let there be light. And there was light. So the first thing that happened in creation was sound. Sound was spoken by the Lord. So God spoke. And, and as the word of God came, light happened. We saw uh, uh, two weeks ago that uh, we, uh, even science today came to the conclusion that uh, sound is in the origin of everything. And there's a new theory, scientific theory called the string theory and we we studied that two weeks ago so we can check it out online but here we see that there was the, the evening and there was the morning the first day now in, uh, in John chapter 1 in the New Testament the Bible says in the beginning and the Amplified uh, adds before all time was the Word Christ and the Word was with God and the Word was God himself so in the first day God created light, and after this uh, process was over, God said, and it was the evening, and it was the morning, the first day. So, the first day was created, and this has a very special significance. Time was created. Time. What is time? Uh, we call time to the way we measure a specific uh, period, and God separated then uh, light from darkness that was pre-existent and created a day. Now, is this a literal day of 24 hours? I know some Christians like to study the Bible. They say, yes, God created the whole universe in six days. But personally, I don't think uh, God has the same way of measuring time that we do. God called it the first day and there's the record of the first day. However, there was no rotation of the earth around uh, the sun. So if day and night wasn't, uh, they were created on the first day, they were created later. So on the first day, there's no rotation, so we cannot say it was 24 hours. It was a season. It's a period of time. And in this period of time, uh, uh, Scripture says that uh, God uh, uh, mentioned it was the evening, and the morning, the first day. Notice that our days uh, start in the morning. So when we measure time, we measure time from morning to evening. So our day starts in the morning, but God's days start at night. So God has a different way of measuring uh, time. And from God's perspective, the cycle of time is very different from ours. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about God's clock. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 9, it, it, it says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting everyone to perish, anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So over here, Scripture says, again, that God has a different way of measuring time. What we consider a day for the Lord is a thousand years. In a thousand years, it's not a thousand days, it's 365,000 
I, I don't know how to measure this. <laughs> we need to multiply the months and all this. It's millions. But the saints, when, whenever in scripture number of thousand is mentioned, uh, the, the, the sense it's, it's enormous, it's different, it's way above. So one day for the Lord, it's nothing. For us, it's 24 hours. But God's clock, it's a little bit different. Notice also when it says here that the Lord is not slow or He is not late in keeping His promises. But because God's clock is different from your clock, Sometimes we think that he's not listening and sometimes we may be tempted to think that he doesn't care or he's too slow. That's why scripture says, listen, God is not slow, but please understand this. God's clock is different from our clock. So many times we pray for things and we accept that we receive the promises of God right now, but they will come a little bit later in our clock. You understand this? So it's very important to understand scripture and uh, we cannot see uh, the, uh, in any way that the day for God is 24 hours. I think it's a lot bigger. But what I'd like to mention uh, uh, regarding time and God's clock uh, and when it says that God is not slow, also scripture says he's not slow but he takes his time because he wants to give us an opportunity for repentance. And he will give us an opportunity. Just yesterday, I was so blessed watching CNN in the afternoon, the funeral for Whitney Houston. Uh, they, they, they spent three hours of CNN time giving a live service, a Pentecostal church service. It was a real Pentecostal service in a Baptist church with a priest, a preacher that dressed like a, pre, uh, a priest, but preached the gospel. You know, it was unbelievable what CNN did. I, I think they weren't aware what they were going to <laughs> into when they did the agreement to broadcast with the Houston's uh, uh, no funeral. The uh, thing is, uh, she was a Christian that was introduced to drugs and I believe she didn't, she didn't lose her salvation, but she lost her life ahead of time. But God used her. Listen, you, God used her to, to bring so many people back to church. Through that service yesterday, a cold day in the United States, millions of people watching a three hour Pentecostal rally. <laughs> it was so good. And, and, you might think, you know, and they were saying, she died too soon. Did she? I don't think she died too soon. There's a consequence for what we do. And if you're a Christian, even though you might go to drugs and alcohol and then repent, you might, might die ahead of time. It's like you, you can be saved and you smoke. And the Bible doesn't say, I shall not smoke. But you go to heaven earlier than those that don't smoke. You see, we all, we all keep in the period of time. We have time. We were born and here on earth, one day we will die. And this is our time. There's a time frame for your life. You're not going to live here forever. And sometimes you ask things to God and God will allow you to go through some trials and tribulations because if everything was okay, most likely you wouldn't come to church or you wouldn't pray. But because now you know you need God, now you make this decision, oh, I'm going to follow the ways of the Lord. I'm going to come to church. And you ask asking and begging God to do something. And I want to tell you, God is not slow. Amen. He's waiting for your repentance. That's why you're here today. Because God loves you. He's not slow. He wants to bless you. But He wants to give us an opportunity to repent. Let, let me read uh, uh, this, this Bible verse in Revelation regarding time. Revelation 10, 6. On the King James. Uh, and He says, And swear by Him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things therein, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So this is a, a, a moment in the future. He's talking about what? About creation. Where did, did we read about creation? We started by reading Genesis chapter 1, creation. And now this is Revelation, the last book of the Bible. And it's mentioning the Creator and creation. 
And it's saying the one that created the earth, the one that created all things, all these things that you see, now in this precise moment that will happen in the future, there's a declaration. And the declaration is, time shall be no more. So the, the, the way we measure time will be stopped, suspended. The clock will not move as it is moving now. There's a season, there's a period that it's called the end of times. And people, they say it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Well, the world will end eventually. But there's a season, it's called the end of times. And the end of times, it's this season. And I know some people say, oh, we should interpret this like this or like that. I'm not here to give a course of theology. I'm here to preach the Word of God. And I'm here to tell you that now you have time. There will be a season where time shall be no longer. And we need to understand time. And that God is giving us time to repent, opportunity to repent. And He really wants to do some changes in our life. Now time is just a part of the measuring uh, system. It's used, for the, this is the, the dictionary definition of time. It says that time is used to compare the duration of events and the intervals between them. Now we use a clock which is based on the rotation of the earth around the sun and it's divided in slots of uh, 24 hours. This is the way uh, mankind decided to measure time and we measure time according to our system. So, so the, 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 the sun uh, is there, the, the earth goes around the sun spins around the sun and we have our way of measuring time. Now we can measure time in different ways. Uh, there's a, a clock called the internet clock and, uh, and sometimes you can go there and uh, an internet clock it's 246 and you, you ask what is this? You don't know because you're not using that system but there's people that use what it's called internet time which is not 24 hours. There, there's different slots so we can me measure time in a different way, but time is a system of uh, those relations and uh, that events have uh, to one another, as past, present or future. This is what time is. Now, I, I want to introduce you today, <coughs> excuse me, to a different concept that has to do with time and I like to call it tempo. Tempo. And tempo, it's a well-known word for musicians. And, well, I didn't plan this. But I'm going to ask Andrew to give me a hand here. Oh boy, can you go to the drums? All right, so I'm, I'm going to ask Andrew to uh, just do a drum beat for one of our first songs of the service. You, you know, God created music. What is music? Sound. But we like music with a beat, so give me a beat. It's okay. Now I like a beat from uh, the fierce. Now try to do it the fastest that you can, same beat. Okay, thank you. Let's give a hand for him. It's, uh, it's, his, his band is a great band. I love it. It's not, a, it's not Christian music, but I really love it. Uh, I, I like, you know, songs that are upbeat. Uh, my wife, not really. So I, I like to listen to, you know, from heavy metal, electronica. I like, uh, you know, uh, some beats, uh, the trash, and all those beats that are really fast. <laughs> and uh, but some people like slower beats. Now with tempo. Uh, you, might, you might say, well, what he played second, it's not the same what he played before. It was. He just changed the tempo. And in terms of tempo, you know, music usually uh, it's measured in beats uh, or beats per minute. Uh, in, in the classical music there are other description, descriptions like uh, Adagio, Vivace, Allegro, all these, these are Italian things. The Germans, they have other ways of measuring. A tempo in music, but usually if it's dance music, it's 120 to 180 beats uh, per, per minute, according, depending on the beat. And if we do a slow song here, sometimes it's 60 beats, 60 BPMs or 8. 
And, and actually, we can take the same song and we can increase the tempo and you'll say it's a different song. But it's not. It's the same song. Why am I telling you this? Because tempo uh, is also used to, to measure the syllables per second. And this is where you can say that people in Montreal uh, speak faster in general than people in Toronto, or the opposite. Uh, actually, the people in Montreal, in the average, they speak slower. And, and depending on the region where you were born, you can speak faster. Uh, sometimes my daughter calls me, hi Sarah, and I have to say, speak slower. Because uh, she's speaking so fast that, you know, I'm not able to pick up everything that she's saying. And, and so, so then she gets upset and she speaks very, very slow. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just I don't get embarrassed anymore today. <laughs> but, but you know how it is. Some people, they're just really fast. I, I mean, if, you, if you've ever been to Italy, uh, you know, the Italians speak fast and they use their hands. And, it, and you look at those cars and you think everybody is having an argument. Because of seeing, you know, all these, and they use them, and they do all sorts of things. I cannot do it here because it might be a square thing. I don't want to do something wrong. But people have different tempo in the way they speak. Now, can, why do we need to know these things? I'm trying to get you to understand God, the things of God, and to understand that in order to listen to God, sometimes we need to change our tempo. So syllables per second, it's the way we speak. Now, Moses, which was the first prophet of the Bible, he had a different tempo than everybody else. In Exodus 4.10, he was giving an excuse to the Lord and he said, Oh Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Listen, he's mentioning what time? He's mentioning the past, and he's mentioning the present. And he's saying, I've been slow a speech and tongue. And some people say he stuttered. I don't think he stuttered. And why am I convinced that he did, didn't, uh, that wasn't his problem? Because uh, he wasn't impaired. Moses wasn't uh, handicapped. Some people will see, well, he has a handicap because he speaks really, really slow. You know when you're talking to someone and they're speaking really slow and you say, come on, just say it. <laughs> Get it off of your chest. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? No, Moses was slow. But for some people, this was a handicap. But for God, this was his gift. This was a very special gift. And let me tell you that people might think that you have a handicap because you're in a wheelchair or because you're blind or there's something different about you. But for God, that might be the, the thing, that might be the gift that God gave you, that will be a blessing for you and for others. Think about it. You might think, well, I have gifts. I'm a bad singer, I'm this, I'm that. Listen, we all have gifts. And even the things that you think are a handicap, sometimes they're not. This was God's gift for Moses. And how do I know this? In Acts chapter 7, 22, it says that Moses learned in all the, the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and deeds. Mighty in what? Words. Mighty in words? I mean, he was slow of speech. <laughs> this is how I know he didn't stutter. He was just slow. What does this mean? He had a different tempo from everybody else. So we have time, there's tempo. If you go to Mexico during summertime and people are having the siesta and you go to a store and you want to buy something there at the store and you find those people so slow 
I mean, they have the, the red, the infrared thing to scan, but they scan like this. I don't, I don't want to offend anyone here, but there's places in Canada where things are slower. If you go to a store, and I'm sorry for the people from the Maritimes, but in Newfoundland and Labrador, in those areas, things are slower. I don't want to offend you. That's the reality. Tempo is different. If I go to a McDonald's here, man, sometimes I think because if you go to a McDonald's in Toronto, the manager has a policy. If you're not served under three minutes, you don't pay. <laughs> yeah, that's Toronto. You don't pay. And over here, sometimes ten minutes later, you're looking at the folks, take easy. But your order is not there. Why? Because of tempo. You understand? So please don't be offended with me. It's just a reality. If you're Mexican or from Newfoundland, don't be offended. It's the weather, it's the nature, it's things, you know? And we need to adapt to tempo. Now, if you're working downtown, you also do things in a certain speed. And you think at a certain pace. And sometimes you think it's good to do things fast. I'm very productive. And the things of God. We need to tune our tempo with God's tempo. We have time, we have tempo. Moses had an ability to listen from God. And this ability, I'm not going to invent a new doctrine. I'm giving you my Tony Silvera's opinion. The reason, or one of the reasons, why he was able to listen from God, it's because his tempo was different from everybody else. That's why they say that Moses, listen to the end of this verse, he was a powerful man in what he said and did. Yet, he had a different tempo. What is your tempo in the things of God? Are you in tune? Is God speaking to you? Are you able to listen from God? Because sometimes we can be absorbed with our own problems, with our own things, and God is trying to speak, but we're in a different tempo. And in order to listen to God, we have to slow down. When the Bible says, remain quiet, this is the right translation, and know that I'm God, or be still, and know that I'm God, when God says be still, it's not be immobilized. God is actually saying, slow down, the way you're thinking. Slow down in the way you take conclusions. You know that Jesus said that we should be uh, slow to speak and, and the Old Testament apostle says be slow to speak and to make past judgment. It's because under the heat of a moment or a situation we form our own opinions about people, about things, and we make it too fast. It's like some people, they have a bad opinion about church. Why? Because they make their conclusion based on their experience. In a certain moment, in a certain season, in a certain church. But we need to slow down. And as we come to church, Listen, we know that we have a clock and we try to do the service in a, you know, seven minutes to a, an hour and a half because we want everyone to have time for the family. But the time you spend here, the time that you set apart to listen to the Word of God, don't think in anything else. Slow down. Slow down. The clock is ticking. But you need to have the tempo according to what God is saying. You know, uh, uh, I, I, I like when somebody plays the tambourine, and uh, and you should play the tambourine more often. Ooh. But one of the annoying things for a drummer, it's when the drummer is playing and the tambourine is off tempo. <laughs> right? 
it's really, really annoying. You know, and in an orchestra, the maestro, the director, the conductor is there, and he has a way of measuring tempo, which is very important. And he's trained to know if someone is going too fast or is out of tune. Tune is a different issue, but today we're talking about tempo. <laughs> and if the person is slowing down, there is a problem. There's people that are excellent singers, but they have the wrong tempo. They slow down, and they slow down. And, and I'm not talking just to musicians. Listen, I'm talking to you. There's times, there's seasons, and there we need to have an understanding of tempo. Now, God knows time, because the Bible says, when the fullness of time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law. Notice the first part. When the fullness of time came. What is this, the fullness of time? It was the exact time. If it was me, I will have sent Jesus during the Internet age. Because His message will be tweeted around the world and his Facebook page will have millions of views. <laughs> and God must think that I'm really dumb <laughs> for thinking this. Because he said, in the, in the right time, I sent Jesus. No technology, no telephone, telegraph, no television. They had just the telewoman. <laughs> That's the fastest way to spread a message. Long word. <laughs> you have a telephone, television, and telephone. <laughs> oh, sorry, ladies. I'm stepping in a... <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> the fullness of time. Now, Ecclesiastes, the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon, he said, there's a time and a season for everything. No, there's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plan, a time to pluck up, which was planted. And he goes on and on and on. And uh, he says, uh, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. I don't do this very often. But a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. So there's a time for everything. Right? Yes. So, and we know this. But why does the Bible have this portion of scripture talking about the time. It's because we need to understand how God works and how we work and there's time. A song has four minutes and 120 beats per second. That's the song. And when you listen on the radio you couldn't care less about it. But there was an engineer that mastered that song that leveled all the highs and the frequencies and all that, and mastered tempo and beat and all things. So when you listen to the song, you say, I like this. You know, next week, we're going to continue to talk about this tempo and our heart. Because God gave you a special device, which is called the heart, that takes tempo. To do, to do, to do. And for during all your life, your heartbeat is really important. And we're going to see how important it is. But today, let me finish by telling you that God is patient. God is patient. And even though we think He's slow, and He's slow in what? In His tempo, because things are not coming in the pace and the speed that we think they should, because we pray for healing and want it now. And we pray for a blessing and we want it now. It's like that ad on TV, I want my money and I want it now. And all these people come to church and they say, I want it now. And God says, slow down. Take it easy. Sit down. Learn how to live. Follow my son Jesus Christ. Receive the blessings that, that I have for you. But you start by this repentance. And after repentance, you need to learn a different tempo. You need to learn how to live differently. You need to learn how to put God first. And you need to learn that when you seek the kingdom of God 
and His righteousness. When you seek Him first, then all these other things will be added unto you in the right time and in the right season. Now, in conclusion, is it also possible to exhaust God's patience? What do you think? Have you ever lost your temper, your patience? Have you ever yelled at someone? What happens when you yell at someone? Your heartbeat starts, you have a rush, and you're excited. <laughs> you know, when I, when I was six years old and, and went to, to school, my school, we had backyard fights every day. And that was our rush. And we were allowed to fight, kids were allowed to fight. Uh, and uh, not anymore. But we had that rush. The heartbeat is different. When, when you lose your patience, you do things that sometimes you regret. You know what I'm talking about. You entered too fast in a different tempo. And you say things under stress and pressure that you never thought you were going to say, but you, you just vented those things. They came, came up. That's why God is slow to anger. But we can't exhaust His patience. We, we really can. He's always waiting for you. You know, Jesus Christ died in the cross at Calvary to purchase the price for your redemption. So that we'll be able to be accepted again by our Creator, by God. That's what it means to be a Christian, is to follow Jesus Christ and we start by repentance. But then we need to learn how to follow God. And we need to put Him first. You put God first. And if you put God first, all of your time will be prioritized or done in a different way. God is patient. And He's calling you today for repentance. This is why the Bible says, if you hear the voice of God, if today you hear the voice of God, repent. Today. So in God's call, today is very important. We might say, oh, I'll leave it for tomorrow. But God wants you to make a decision today. He's waiting for you. He's the master of time. And we need to respect Him. I don't want to exhaust God's patience. No, I, I, I always try to help people that have addictions to overcome their addictions because this is the way I came to the Lord. And I was fortunate because when I made a decision for God, I never slide back. But some people, they slide back once, twice, three times, four times, and they come back to the Lord and they love the Lord and they live with that addiction. Some like they were even famous preachers. There's a preacher from uh, uh, last century, A. A. Allen. Amazing preacher. You cannot find his books because he was an alcoholic. And he was the, the prince of preachers. He was really extraordinary. But he was an alcoholic. Besides preaching the word of God, next day he was drunk to death. And people will say, he's not of God. Well, he was. He walked with the Lord. But he had a severe problem. He had a severe problem. Now, God was slow in anger with a Allen. But with some people, it's just like that. Today they promise to the Lord, I will drink no more. Next day they're drinking, two days later they're in the cemetery. So we never know. So God's love is the same for all of us, but His patience can be different. Is this confusing? So He loves me, He loves you, He loves us all, but so many believers don't understand these things. And some people have plenty of free time, but they don't invest for God. They say, I'll go to church, okay, 12 o'clock, I'm leaving. Or we have an altar time, we say, okay, it's altar time, I really don't need prayer, I'm leaving. Listen, when we come to church, God says, Leave six days for yourself and keep one for me. 
And if you do so, you'll be blessed. Why? Because in God's clock, He decided that it's best for us to slow down one day and we separate one day. But we really need to keep one hour of those 24 that day. But if we decide to come to church and we say, Lord, I, I, I arrive at the beginning of the service and I leave right at the end. Just that decision will help you to discipline your life in order to give your time to the Lord. Some people are too busy for God. This has consequences. Now, other people, they have extra time. And, and some of these people, they will hear an answer to the Lord. And the Lord will ask them to do crazy things, and they will do it. <laughs> like giving extra money, going on a mission trip, uh, you know, leaving the job to, to, to be in ministry. And, and these people, if they don't have time, they make it. Let me finish the message, uh, and let me conclude with this. Matthew 6.23 says, Seek first, first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So this is the key. Now, in Matthew 25, Jesus said, For everyone that hath shall be given more, and he shall have abundance. And he continues, Those who do not lose what they have, they will lose it. But from him that had not used what he had, shall be taken away even what he had. You know, something we, have, we all have? Time. Time. The fact that you're here, you decided to give time to God. If you say, I'm not going to church because I need to do $15 an hour you know, cleaning something or doing something, or I make $20 an hour doing something, I'm working, I cannot go to church. We're not depriving God from anything. We're depriving ourselves from God's blessing. Because we can always make time for God. I've learned this, if I don't make time for God, He will cause me to make time for Him. It might be the hospital bed. I'm not trying to scare you. But we need to be very serious. Now, if we give time to God, guess what we're going to, to have in return? What? We give what? Time? We receive time. We receive time. My life was extended because I decided to give it to the Lord. Do you want to extend your lifetime? Yeah. Some of you here are 10 years old. And you said, yeah. Amen. How do you extend your lifetime? Easy. That's very easy. Give time to the Lord. And when I say time, it's not just church. It's time to God. Deuteronomy 5.23. You shall walk in the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land that you shall possess. Prolong what? Your days. Your days. How? If you walk the way the Lord intended for you to walk. And what is this? That's why you need to come to church. That's where church help will help you. To understand what you shall do for the Lord. And that's why you have pastors that will help you to find the way, the things that you shall be doing for the Lord. Some people are even offended. You know, I, I had situations, people say, I want to sing in the choir. I'm not a great singer, but I, I, I know when a person sings badly. <laughs> And I, I, as a pastor, I should say, okay, singing in the choir is good. But, you know, why don't you help with children? And some people are offended. I mean, if you don't have a talent in an area, it's not that God cannot add talents, because He will take from the one that has and doesn't use it, and He will give to the ones that are using them. You know, certain times I, I lead worship here. I'm not a worship leader. When I started serving the Lord, I couldn't sing in key any song, forget it. But God gave me the ability, if I need to, I'm able to lead worship in key. I didn't have it. How did I obtain this? Because I played the guitar for singers, Christian singers, and I invested time and time and time and time in things of God, 
And I started the church and I had no worship leader and I had to do it. And I said, Lord, I'm going to do it anyways. And God helped me to correct an area that I had zero, zero, zero talent. Now I don't have 100% talent, but I can do it. So I'm not saying that you cannot do what you desire, but you need pastors to tell you, listen, your area of talent is this one. Do this. That's what the pastor does. I'm following you. Now, if you want to prolong your days, and you're in a church, and you're always thinking that you know what's best for the church, you should become the pastor of the church. <laughs> Hello? Because so many people have opinions about the church. You know? Because they've been in the church for 20 or 30 years, they have opinions. So the church should be like this. Why don't you start your own church? Now, if you're in a church, you support leaders that will help the church to function as it should. In the right tempo. If you have to the church. If you pray for the leaders, you support them. Because as you do so, things will fall into place. That's the way it works, folks. This is church. Church is amazing. It's the best thing on earth. God sent His Son and He died for all the world. But He had a special place in His heart for the church, which is the gathering of those that said, Yes, God, I want every day to deny myself and follow you. Daily. So it means in a 24-hour time frame, you need to deny yourself and say, It's not what I think. It's what you think. Amen. And one day you'll be accountable, guess what, for your time. <coughs> and the pastor, guess what, we're accountable for our time and for your time. So I'm, done, I, I'm more accountable, me and the pastors here, than you before God. Because God will not ask you account for South Shore Community Church now, but He will ask me. And we lost the other pastors that are here. We'll be accountable for your souls. You understand? So this is why when I'm accountable for others, I need to make sure that God is in control of everything. That God sets the temple. You know, Jesus said, you heard John the Baptist? You are like those people. That say, sing me a song and I will dance to the rhythm of the song you sing. We'll talk about this further. See, Jesus was trying to tell them, it's not up to you to decide my time or my season. This is why when they came to Jesus and they said, when will this happen, these things that you told us? And Jesus said, this is not up to you. And listen, it's not even up to me as the Son of God. But the Father will set the right time, the right season for everything. Amen. Hello? Yes. Do you have the right tempo? Mm -hmm. We're going to ask the present worship team to come. We're going to have a word of prayer. Because God said in Psalm 46 that be still and know that I am God. Let us all stand. We might pray today, as we learn about a lot of things, is that you retain what's really important, what, which is the Word of God for you today. Certain times, we're doing things too fast, or we're doing things too slow. I'm talking about the things of God. I'm not talking about your skills at work, whatever you do. If you're a skilled worker and you do, things, you do things very fast, good for you. Now I'm talking about listening to God and walking with God and being in tune with Him. In heaven, you see, heaven was created by God. Not only the earth was created, but heaven. God created heaven. And when prophets had visions of heaven, Guess what? There's a choir singing. And there's a song. 
holy, holy, holy. There's a song where? In heaven. So in heaven, there's music. Even painters describe angels playing harps with strings. Because what, what God does, everything that God does starts by sound and there's a new, that's why we sing in church. It's because God intended for us to be in the right attitude, mood, to receive the Word of God by spending some time worshiping Him at a tune of a song. Folks, what you do here is so important. Amen. The way you play, the way you sing, that's important. But this music that comes from here to the platform, it's not to be judged by them, but when you're playing here, imagine nobody's there. It's just God. Amen. And as we minister to God, this is why we have the night of worship Saturday. We want to come here to minister to God. And some people will say, I will come if we sing Amazing Grace and then the number 432. <laughs> Listen, we can sing those. But what's important, it's not the song that you like, it's how you worship the Lord in the tune we have as a church.